down the outside, further back to Moonlight Magic, but it's all Warmonger. Warmonger's a mile in front of the Derby. Eight lengths in front, Warmonger, and Warmonger will destroy them. Warmonger, Warmonger's rocked home. Welcome to Bet Talk to Behind the Curtain. Look at how pro punters operate. I'm your host, Scoot. I've got Johnny Walter in studio. Congratulations yet again. Gone through to the final for Stradbroke Day. Very exciting. Super pumped, mate. Super pumped. Get down to Melbourne. Flight's booked. And uh, we uh, were awaiting, I guess, John McLeod's going to uh, meet us there. And it's going to be an absolute beauty. So a uh, bit of deja vu from uh, a couple of years back. So we've got the same finals. We've got uh, John Walter and John McLeod. So it's going to be a, uh, a big, big Stradbroke day. DK flying uh, solo down there again with Nico still on the cruise. How are you? Nico's on the cruise, yep. Yeah. No, going all right, Scooty. Yes. Um, cruise ship, I was just saying to you, if anyone's the first tip for the show, if you want cruises, they do a bit of cruising, enjoy the cruising. But uh I mean, you see what the problem's in Namia lately, but uh, we were, the last cruise we went out on was to Namia and Vanuatu and all that. Um, I'd swerve all that, or if you do go out out the Pacific Island, stay on the ship. It's uh, it's not much to see there in those joints, but Nico's got the right idea. I think he's headed up the Queensland coast, hasn't he? Right up to the Port Douglas and all that, the Bewley Beach and all that business. So uh, half his luck, but um, hopefully have him back next week. Hard to beat uh, Queensland. Did you cop any of the uh, stream or... What did you what did you make of uh, the same two going through to the final? Uh, cream rises to the top. You want to say that? They're not. Yeah, they're all right. They go all right. Those two blokes. Are, um, yeah. No. Well, wait. I, I, I thought. I thought Gordo was day was rolled around broadsiding. I thought at one. I thought. Oh, surely Gordo will be just <laughs> rolled broadsiding. He'll be sweet. And then I saw he was on zero. So uh, don't know what happened there, but. Um, no, it'd be good to see the boys. I'll catch up with them when they come down next week, whenever it is. Tipping it would would have haunted Gordo a bit if he he was just determined to do it. I just I was just sitting there in the studio, I just couldn't believe he didn't just chips in. Like he is a big chips in man, and we saw that later in the day. But it just goes to show you. So, however you set your day up, normally as a punter, you need to have a rough strategy. And a couple of the times that we've managed banks, we've finally figured out that if if you put all your units out and have to turn your bank over, that's a, that's a safer way of doing it and try and have a set strategy so you don't blast off in the last or you know when to chip up and when to chip down. It's a weird one, though. You've got to turn all your money over. You've got to stay alive. Mm. Uh, Broadsiding was $4 to two sixty dollars or something. Steam, you know? yeah. So if we, if we had been able to bet from sort of 9 in the morning, mm. when it was $4, it probably changes things. I don't know whether it would have for him, but it, it definitely does. It's... um. Yeah, it was weird, I, and it was strange because I, I actually never heard one person's bet all day. I was sort of watching the banks, and Donnie was coming on up every now and then, but um, yeah, I didn't really know what happened. Uh, the Oaks was weird. I thought a few people would find that winner just because the favourite looked a bit short. So mm. yeah, it was strange, but um, yeah, poor old Donnie, he went headless chook late, didn't he? And he was around the grounds, and same game multing, and it was, it was fun and games late, but yeah. But a bunch of field coming up to the last two races, isn't it? I think I said to Donnie the day before, I said, if you can find the winner of the, the derby, I think that'll be the uh, the game changer and that'll be the uh, the decider. It just looked like that sort of race. But, um, it uh, yeah, it's it's a different format. But, um, yeah, I thought it was a, uh, a good spectacle nonetheless. And looking forward to Strabo Day. It looks like it's going to be an absolute cracker there. Uh, interesting news, or just a quick whip around. I see Josh Blanksby's um, leaving uh, the MRC CEO gig. And it'll be interesting to see which way he goes from there. I heard his um, interview on RSN. Um, I found it quite interesting that um, he's going to leave the MRC with half a billion dollars in assets. And if they rezone or they do something with Sandown, that could boost to one billion. And that would make them the richest club in, um, in Australia. I'm not really sure what the ATC's stack looks like. I know I think from all reports I hear, uh, the whispers are that VRC aren't flying. Um Mooney Valley need to uh, do something with their track. So they got their master plan to roll out and, and reconfigure their whole track. But the interview that I heard on RSN, I thought it was quite polished. And I've always been a big fan of Josh. He's obviously um, got a legal background, bet fair, uh, understands wagering, obviously has controlled the, the, the uh, partnerships at MRC with the big wagering companies. So I think RV, if they don't get him, it's going to be an absolute big miss because – He's the sort of person that can bring everyone together and he's sort of proven that forward thinking when Peter Volandi's launched the Everest, they were the first club to make a move and say, okay, well, we've got this, we've got the race lights of the Scalacci, we want to buy a slot and they found a way to try and, um, I guess, extend the olive branch to to work hand in hand with New South Wales and I think racing needs a lot more of that. So I think he's the logical uh, replacement or he'd be the perfect guy to, to steer racing Victoria. But 
he yeah he he did mention that um he wasn't really for prize money cuts which is interesting because something has to break somewhere so i'm just not sure how he's going to reconfigure things if he did get the job to um to make sure uh, they can come under budget because at some stage things have got to um well you just got to find money from somewhere and where are those those cuts and savings going to be from well let's he'd be used to that because Caulfield Caulfield runs actual racing runs at a loss and they mm. find find money from other revenue streams don't they through all mm. they bought it they, they tuned into pokies and then the land and property and stuff like that so he's used to probably so that's probably why he's coming from that angle scoop yeah. But uh, yeah, you wouldn't. I mean, if, if racing loses a, if he's lost a racing, that'd be huge. So I'd, oh, you'd hope he'd be um, in the line there. I don't know how much he loves his footy. He's, they, they said he's bandied around for the Richmond job as well, isn't he? And you know, I'm sure Tab Corp will have a look at him, but I don't know if you'd, you'd want that gig, even though they'd pay plenty. But um, yeah, he'd be, uh, be he'd be a sad loss to racing if, he, if that was the end of him in our sport for sure. So hopefully, um, hopefully he has a, has, has, a, has a fling at the uh, RV role. Yeah, I think he'd probably have the credentials to take the t- uh, the TAB role, but. Just coming from Clubland to go back into wagering, it'd uh, it'd be another big step, and the pace would be pretty pretty fast there. I'd I'd probably think he could lean RV, and he'd just be able to sit on his back wheel and do the job with ease. But um, mm, interesting to see how that all all shakes out. But um, yeah, I'm definitely a believer, and I think he'd be a great man for the job. Mass abandonments in uh, New South Wales. I'd guess that there's probably 50 meetings lost uh, since the start of the year. Tracks are on a huge. About 30, I think. Is it? Yeah. It's got to be bigger than that. No, it's, it's 27. Oh, Just well, up here. Been Northern Rivers. Yeah, so you, Northern you might Rivers. be right. You might be right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, especially with uh, you know secondary meetings that we don't really pay huge attention to. You probably it's probably north of that. You're probably right. Mm. And then uh, there's also a little bit uh, another thing bobbling along the off the track funds so rehoming uh, thoroughbreds. There's a lot of people bobbling. That, well, over bubbling, didn't well, it's it? It's over bubbling, <laughs> isn't it? So there's a lot of a lot of anger and um, yeah, labour pains coming from uh, a lot of um, staunch sort of breeding operations and um, media types and fringe sort of operators uh, really questioning where the money is um, for this um, rehoming of thoroughbreds because they can sort of see this big problem. It's another Titanic sort of scenario uh, where there's just too many horses and uh, too much racing and an oversupply of um, of stock. So um, alarm bell there and uh, the other thing that uh, you should probably check out there's a save rose hill twitter handle that we might uh, tweet from our uh, little birdie tv handle um so there's a big ground swell uh, looming there because uh yeah you can you can sort of see the language that uh they use around the sand down move to possibly sell uh they keep talking about that being a member vote but it uh it's a different story and a different kettle of fish when uh it's talking when they're talking about uh, the rose hill sale so Interesting to see where that goes, but um, just jump on board uh, our Twitter handle and, and we'll retweet that. What scares you is that they're going to use the thoroughbred issue uh, and all you these little things all that pop in. up to sell Rose Hill. Mm. Oh, this will fix it. Yeah, but it shouldn't. It should never get to that. That's the problem. And I think the the thoroughbred thing is just a huge another. You know, pretty much what we've been talking about for two, three, four years. It's just another sign that no one can afford racing. And, um, you know, obviously the horses are the uh, are what we need to look after as, you know, because we love them, number one, and number two for the longevity of the game. And as more people can't afford to keep up the payments on their horses, we're going to get more horses in English digital. We're going to get more horses retired. Where are they going to go? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's – obviously everyone's worried about this 2% of prize money and where that money goes. And, you know, when you've got people that love horses more than life and do they get up every day, every day of the year, rain, hail, snow, to feed horses, do it for nothing – and they're the ones pulling out because they can't even afford mm. to feed themselves. Um, that's not a great. That's not a great sign, is it? But um, yeah, I think there's. Yeah, we talk about it too much, but I hope Rose Hill selling is not the option that they take. It's uh, it's in- it was interesting. I heard uh, BZ talk on uh, Racing dot com, and he was talking about how big the field sizes were over the next few days at uh, Geelong and Swan Hill and. But the reason being is they've they've shut off night racing, so all of a sudden you don't have to double dip and double supply for all these horses. And as punters, that's what we want. And turnover it drives more heavily if you've got the bigger field sizes. So it would be good to see the programming sort of get back and back to where it sort of used to be, or just shift the meetings. You just don't have to double handle everything, and they're slowly starting to do that. But yeah, there just needs to be um, better programming because even the recreational punters that I speak to. That they just they get lost and can't follow racing anymore because there's just too many races. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 difficult, isn't it? It's a, it's a tough then one. Then you've got a, then you've got eleven races, two hundred plus acceptors for Ramwick. Is that good? 
as a punter, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer. You know, heavy track yourself. It's that time of year too, where it's 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 impossible for everyone. Impossible to keep everyone happy. You just got to deal with what you you served up every day, haven't you? Just roll with the punches. Mm. Anyway, that's a quick uh, news wrap up. A little bit of a wrap up of uh, last week's show and some results. Uh, Donny had Ella's World, which uh, took an eternity to get there on the Friday night, but what a cracking bet! I think he's uh, three or four in a row for his uh, Don Best, so he's flying. Uh, Emirate or Emirate was a, a nice early winner at Rose Hill for you. Well, just before the stream kicked off, so we were sort of giggling when that was uh, crossing the line. Could have uh, set you up. You love a little short. Uh, moral into uh, something you like for the rest of the day so uh, you still uh, managed to find Warmonger and Chinny Boom in the last and uh, it was a real pattern day obviously at uh, Eagle Farm and Wagga Wagga no mention of Wagga Wagga the well, was, brothel yeah. joint I don't know what I watched that replay so many times it was so weird wasn't it like I, think, ride, I saw it? you tweet something which was probably the most pertinent thing like it wasn't as if you like he was he was half a it, what what it just couldn't go <laughs> and then when he got it to go then he sat up on it and then it all the energy you used early was wasted. It was just wasn't it brutal. And then you kind of wanted it to do nothing, and then it did enough to just drive you right up the wall. Yeah, <laughs> like it was. It was just brutality from start to finish. I know. Um, oh, whoever I responded to had tagged in Troy Cor- or Malua Racing, and uh, uh, not that they liked it, that my tweet or anything. But he, there was a follow. There was a follow to uh, follow back for the DK off Malua Racing. So I'm sure they read uh, the views and. Their opinions that S. Miller right up there. Not, 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 not. I mean, fair enough. I thought them they might ask a question what he was doing back there, but again, there are no stewards. Not one mentioned in the stewards report. It was like one at a mile and a half, though, wasn't it? It was a bit. It was just they were so bad that it, it was just an absolute moral by default. <laughs> Everything that went wrong could. Uh, Johnny McLeod uh, had a couple of freebies for us last week. He was sort of chips in uh, Auto Manger, which were a, f- a fair few were. Uh, Walt and I were keen on Warmonger, so hopefully a few people found that, especially off the email as well. And then Gordo uh, could have been more bullish broadsiding, so hopefully everyone got uh, a big lick out of that horse. The top sports steamers went zip from four, but a couple in the forgive file. I thought In Secret did enough. I thought she was a pass mark uh, looking for uh, you know that getting that run under the belt, especially where the track was playing. It was tested going, and then uh, obviously, uh, magic time was a bit of a forgive. I just um, like to get the old adjusted rankings of the day. Mm. Warmonger running, I think, and it's obviously, you know, anyone's sections, I don't think it's the fastest section, but after the adjustment, I don't know what they do, but they're very good when I line them up. The fastest last 200 of the day, Warmonger. Ha- <laughs> How's that possible? What was that? What was that? I know it won by 10 and everyone saw it was very obvious, but... After everything it did, like it had a battle in the run, blah, blah, blah. They went quick. It chased it, carted up the field. It did everything you could to spend energy and ran the fastest last 200 of the day. It's it's one of the most incredible wins. I don't know what it's going to do in the future, but holy cow, what a win. Mm, great ride and just, just goes to show, a bit of a tactics change, jockey change. Go forward, DK. It's the old old pearl. Stop yeah, dragging well, it out of the race. Boom, they, put it in the were, race. They were and... trying to get to the settle, weren't they? I mean, that's mm. you know, They tried different gear and getting it to settle, so I was sort of a little bit of a victim of probably still educating it young and then, um, yeah, change of tactic, get it in a good rhythm rather than reefing and holding it back. And, yeah, and uh, once they get in a find a rhythm horses, um, they get in a happy space and then they can they can let go. So uh, that's obviously what it did there. He said it was a track gallop. He said it was embarrassing. He said I felt like it was a gallop on a thing. I've never heard anyone talk like that after a derby. Uh, crazy. He's on a horse on Saturday too. I can't remember off the top of my head and I know we're circle jerking shin pretty hard at the moment, but he's a, <laughs> he's a shining light among – among a bit of a average run with the riders, and I can't remember what it is. I'll find it at some point. But he's a, there's a big rider change where he's on something up in Brisbane over the weekend, which uh, it could improve significantly just with that change. Yeah, I, I think I might have half found a, a couple of those, but uh, I sort of got got a bit dizzy. There's nine races uh, in their body, and they're not completely straightforward. I wouldn't I wouldn't call them Gordo Moral ABC races, but um, yeah, it's I think it's a, a great betting card. And just fingers crossed, it's not. Dynamite red hot uh, leaders up there at uh, Eagle Farm because I think we can uh, chip around the edges well, and find the a couple. That's the one thing. Like, I know there's blow ups about rain, uh, watering the track, but hopefully that will stop that. You know, that hopefully if they keep just tipping a bit of water in, that'll stop the, the dynamite, which is no one wants that. Mm, plus two and a half the, uh, the rail. Uh, best of the best on uh, all Queensland group racing. So uh, you boys were all over it in the stream last week. So uh, taking the early price bob and watching them uh, fall off the cliff was good work. Uh, they've got the protest payout. They've got Top Fluck and uh, they're Australian-owned operators. So make sure you get around topsport.com.au and bet local and uh, keep the money in Australia. Uh, DK, we're going to go uh, spear 
straight into Flemington, and uh, you're going to steer the ship for uh, Nico. And we're going to have a look at uh, race four at Flemington, I think, for your uh, first one here. Odds courtesy of uh, Top Sport. We've got uh, Quantum Cat, the favourite, 350 into 320. Uh, Berkshire Breeze, 390. Merzan, $5. The Genius, $11. Roaring Engine, 11 Pesto, 12 And you can get much, much better the rest. Little, uh, this has been clipped, actually, since uh, you sent, sent this through, but 350 into 320 this morning. Quantum Cat's the one you like. Uh, Walla D Lane. Well, D Lane back on the inside there uh, in the big white blaze. Um, so this was third up at ran week so first up it ran really well at mornington um nico tipped in a race it was in second up he liked to singe his prestige i tipped this they both ran really well and got bombed by savoir favre late at 25 to 1 or something of course um that was a pressure 2000 goes up there it went up favorite here went up 260 it was 260 to 460 uh drew nine of nine was going to go back at a slow tempo the market obviously identified that um still ran really well just got out bob by a thing that had six kilos less there you know 58 and a half the winner had 52 and a half there just got the bob sprinted home really well i think it was the second best last 600 of the day um that's third up at the distance so now i've just got a thing i love stays fourth up this has got the run under the belt goes to d lane draws a gate um d lane's a bit of quality when the other other riders are up north uh yeah just uh, ticks the boxes here for me um, looks ready. Looks the right race for it. It's an import. It's won over the twenty four hundred a few times overseas. So um, yeah, looks good. Uh, Berkshire Breeze is, is 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 going well. It's probably the main danger. Uh, looks back in good order. Another import, similar thing. Um, won over twenty four hundred overseas. It's had the two runs at the two thousand. I'd say it probably rolled to the front. And I, I think I think Quantum Cap might just follow it all the way. Uh, Merzan was disgraceful last Sunday. Disgraceful. Oh, wasn't it? What bad? was that? Oh. Like Frosty gave it every possible. I just thought <laughs> on the turn, this is just going to win, and then it just stopped. <laughs> um, on the quick backup, Waller. I don't know if he's got the shits with it or what. Um, it said it maybe wanted further, but uh, yeah. So I don't know about it. Then Frosty's jumped off it. He said, "Yeah, leave me out of it. I'll jump on Quantum Cat." Thanks. So um, I'll go with Frosty Quantum Cat. Any thoughts? Any of that? that no, I thought uh, I, I was sort of against Quantum Cat only at the price last start. And he did give it a great ride, but they did walk. So, yeah, I think it was a beautiful run to bring it to its peak. And its previous two runs that had peaked really hard mm. sort of made a run against tempos and things like DK said. And I thought it might have still been a run short just because it was sort of still getting to its peak. And that was a much better run where it sort of ran through the line. So I think um, I think DK's jumping on at the right time. Yeah, nice, DK. The only horse that I've got notes against is uh, Farag, but uh, he is one of my sticks horses. I think as soon as they get this uh, Farag out to the uh, jumps, he'll just absolutely uh, destroy him. He'll jump. <laughs> yeah, well, he's a three. He loves a three thousand. He loves soft. So yeah, that's yeah. that sort of Aaron Purcell. Yeah, mm. jumps Black Booker. Farag. What, what show are we on? Hey. It's, oh, we, we moonlight as uh, jump, jumps people. Actually, that info, what is it? Affluential? Geez, if it doesn't give you a boner as a jump See? person, yeah, you're yeah. coming oh, around. Man. Oh, and I, I did get a little I, – I sort of got a half chubby, and as soon as DK sent the quantum cap through it, I said, have a look at this. He's tipping the 2,500-metre race. So it's win-win. He either tips the winner or he comes on next week and goes, why am I tipping in these again. bloody oh, camel oh, races? 2,500. <laughs> oh, what am I you doing? should know better. Oh, uh, My record's about none for 77 with D-Lane too. I can never catch him. Merzan had need an act of God. I just don't know what – yeah, I agree. He was absolutely off the map last start and uh, I he'd need I was a, looking. I went looking for a gear change scoop. You know, I might have choked down or needs a bit of – needs the blinkers or something. Nothing. Mm. Just on the back up off, Frosty said, oh, maybe further and softer. Well, he's getting further. He's not getting softer. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I like it. Uh, <laughs> I love it. So we, we can't lose. So we'll uh, chips in Quantum Cat and we'll hear the uh, the gripe if it gets beat. Let's have a look at uh, the next race at Flemington that tickles DK's fancy. That's race seven. And it's the uh, 1,100 metres ATA Trainers Trust Handicap. Uh, La Parienne is $7.50 here. Uh, wide open betting here. Carbonados, uh, $8. Bossy Nick, $8. Right to Party, $8. $8.50 Steel City. Pivot City, $10. Marble Nine, ten. Uh, then you're getting $12 about namesake. And then Sue Spirit, $18. And much, much better the rest. DK is going to finally jump on Pivot City. Pivot City, yes, this is uh, this is on the quick backup, like Mirazan, but this is a completely different run of Mirazan. There is uh, Frosty getting held up back inside them there, and the yellow and the, the tigers colours. Um, never, 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 ever gets a crack. Uh, so, no, no surprise to see you on. This, yeah, this is well, this yeah. is last Saturday. Yeah. This is when the track, the thing you had to come down the outside. The inside was off by now. Um, yeah, and he's just uh, 
He just, yeah, just had a barrier troll. So no surprise to see it on the quick back up here. Um, he's a nice, he's a pretty nice horse. He's still a cult. Um, I've still, still, still got hopes for him. I um, think they've had a bit of trouble working him out, but I think the blinkers on. Now, when they put the shades on, they put him up to 1400. I don't think that really worked. Then he's had, they brought him back to the 12. He was terrific in the Tobin bronze. He's upriding the hot speed. He gave Skybird the perfect cut up right behind him, and Moesha had the suck run back on the fence, flash late. He had the temerity to stick on. And then off that, he's coming at that barrier, that run there, which is um, just a barrier troll. So comes back, he comes down the straight. Um, he hasn't. He's hasn't been down. He's been down the straight once. Was in a forgive. side mistakes. It was a forgive. He was late. He ended up shinsaw, and then was stuff that started four eighty against the likes of Archo Nacho. I am unstoppable. King's Gambit. Um, so they had high hopes for him. They, st uh, they haven't gelded him yet. So they still, still, still think he might, 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 might win a race somewhere. So um, he's a pretty handy horse. He's he's the here and now. He's fit. Um, he's drawn the right part of the track. Find a bum. Um, he'd be strong at the end of the twelve. Um, in an even race. I just want the race fit horse. Who uh, off the bat, off the forgive run last start? Um, yeah, I thought he's going to be ten to one. I mean, it's a pretty open race, but uh, he's a nice horse. You can get ten, ten to one about. I, re I, get, I not many people usually ask me about Melbourne for obvious reasons, and I reckon I had five or six people ask me about Pivot City last Saturday. It was just super strange. They were just like, "Oh, what do you know about this horse? What do you know about this horse?" It was really weird. So there's, um, yeah, that was just a weird move. Geez, I'm a La Parain fan. I missed it last start, but. Um, Gate four up straight, a little bit different to round a bend, but it, it'll be interesting to see you know, how it goes. I found I'm doing, with this horse, you want a brutal, another nice, nice or brutal story for um, racing owners and stuff like that. He, the Hardings put him through the put him through the uh, yearling sale, and uh, James James Harron and Bray, they thought they might get six hundred eight hundred. It's a beautiful type, and uh, James Harron and Bray got in a bidding war, and anyway, Harron got it for nine seventy five thousand, nine hundred seventy five thousand. So the Hardings head to the Head to the bar of a couple of glasses of champagne. On the second glass of champagne, Seamus Mills taps Rob Harding on the shoulder and said, "Mate, that horse has just had it kicked out in the box and hit a metal metal thing in the box. Gone back to the box, get it X-rayed, fracture, wholesale fell through. They got oh. left with him. So there's which horse? <laughs> La Pivot, Pivot City. Oh. Pivot City. Oh, Pivot, Pivot City. City. Yeah. Oh. yeah, Pivot City. Yeah. Oh wow. Wow. Yeah, there he is. There's one. There's a brilliant. Yeah, so um, oh, you'd you like a fairy tale end, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so um, I mean, they've got plenty of skin in the game, the Hardings. So um, yeah, but there's one, there's another, just a, just the upturned brutal story. Imagine <laughs> being in the ring and Harren and someone going well, head to head, you'd just be, oh, they're full. Wet that dream. is the full blown roarer. Yeah. Holy cow! <laughs> and then for it to be taken away, taken yeah. away with us on, on the second glass of champagne when you celebrate a little win. Anyway, there you go. He'd cough it back up pretty quickly. Mm. Namesake Sydney horse, interesting placement first up. It's a, yeah, it looked Declan. a good two and three year old, and mm. I just like noticed it. Ma first up, he's bloody hard for me to gauge. I don't know if TK seen any jump outs or whatever. He's a, he's a weird horse, but I, he never looked like one that was going to go right on with it. Yeah, and there's a couple of horses. Uh, it'd, it'd be interesting to see what the betting story is there. But um, and seventeen runners down the straight, it's always yeah. fun. GK twenty five hundred into it, seventeen <laughs> runners down the straight. I love it. Real flair play. Isn't it? That's real Flemington stuff. That's what you've got to do. <laughs> That's why, that's why you stay. That's why I usually stay well clear of it. But <laughs> you'll know pretty early uh, with Pivot City. So he's uh, drawing barrier seventeen. So interesting to see uh, what part of the track is best there. Puntingform.com.au is uh, your next step to becoming a uh, full or semi-time pro punter, and you can match your uh, tape watching skills with your data. Nico loves it. DK loves it. I love it. Especially with racing and sports, uh, there'll be a, plenty of people out there looking for something new. Yeah. If uh, if racing and sports have uh, ripped the guts out of your form uh, discovery, make sure you give uh, punningform.com to your chance and uh, test them out and see if uh, they ripped it out full stop or just made it not made. You have to pay for it. No, no, you can't. Not not available. Apparently. Not available. Some, yeah. some of it. There's some obviously it. they have paid things, but mm. um, but that same service at the at the moment not available. Yeah, so they just pulled some pulled some stuff. Yeah, weird, isn't it? Makes sense, but. Wasn't yeah, it copying some of and someone abusing it? Reading between a couple of those tweets between Marco and did, I'm sure that's been going on. Did you see that time. tweet? Yeah. Mm. He, Marco said, Yeah, have a look at those tweets Marco sent to Adam Blinko. I think he said one of those reasons is the reason they pulled it. Someone taking the I uh, think they're trying to do a few big deals with you know, corporates or whatever too, bookies, which um, you know, if all the info's out there, it's, it's just sort of lessens its value, doesn't it? It makes uh, life difficult uh, with it. Uh, yeah, it's not even behind the paywalls. So it's uh, even trickier. But uh, make sure you give punning form a go, and they'll uh, they'll sort you out. And that's no knock on racing and sports either. And by the way, they're, they're they're like what they have been providing free forever is is unparalleled. So mm. 
yeah, they underpin a lot of the um, a lot of the form guys that you see attached to bookie. So they do a good job. Eagle Farm Race uh, Four is the first one I'm going to have a look at. So the rails plus two and a half. It's beautiful up here. It's freezing in the morning. Bit of dew around, but uh, and I've just put a little bit of irrigation on the track. So fingers crossed, it's all sweet. Soft five should get in the four zone because it's uh, there's no rain on the radar, which is good. The first race that I'm going to have a look at here, or the first runner that's sort of uh, interesting for me, Gold Boom last start when I thought it was a bit short at $3.60, Extravagant Star 480, Shooting for Gold, uh, six fifty. Shalaz Moment, seven fifty. Vogel Martini, seven fifty. Eight fifty. Hardware Lane, ready, Steady Ready, $12.00. Uh, economics, twenty six into fourteen dollars. That could be uh, that could be Donny's money, and you got King Kappa D poor. Uh, the horse I thought most suited here by breakneck speed over the thousand meters was uh, Extravagant Star, and uh, I like her just uh, in the green in behind here, and she never sort of has clear running, and she's got uh, a fair bit of horse uh, up her sleeve, and I think that form's decent enough, the bright shadow form, and you've seen uh, Bazik come out and run really well, so she's still just stuck in behind him and sort of just floats to the line, uh, never extended. I like uh, Schiller off. I like uh, J, J Carr on, barrier five. She should get every opportunity, but... Um, yeah, she had clear running there. She could have uh, definitely won that race. I think a bigger track suits her. I thought she was okay at uh, Hawkesbury. And um, I think down at 53 kilos, she comes up against a few of these that she can uh, put away. Uh, breakneck speed up front. Um, shooting for gold sort of appeals a little bit, but 60 kilos. Can she, can shooting for gold give her seven kilos? I'm I'm not convinced. Uh, and a start. Yeah, most likely. Mm, and then economics was the horse that uh, I think Donny tipped uh, last start, and it was the uh, it was the flop and fail. It's a dangerous horse down with um, fifty four kilos. Furby it was in track. the bat out of hell be- behind Hardware Lane when uh, Walt and I sort of kicked up for uh, Hardware Lane up at the sunny coast and got the cash there. But the problem with economics is he's uh, he's fifth emergency, so he's a deadly horse, but he needs three more scratchings before he can sort of get there. But I'd be definitely willing to. Um, Forgive him because he's trialed well since economics and the market support's already come for him. So twenty six into fourteen dollars. I thought she was a good bet around the four dollar eighty quote. I noticed other bookies are sort of into four dollars. Um it's a it's a tricky race, but all credit to uh, Tony Holland. I thought Golden Boom was completely and utterly cactus. Um, but at three dollars sixty, him sitting on the speed against uh, a handful of other horses that are all gonna push forward. I was sort of just looking for the the horse that's going to get a little bit further than a thousand meters and something that could uh, absorb the pressure and then uh, just sort of kick away with no weight and that's why I come up with Extravagant Star. Yeah, I think you've, the key you said is probably the rider change because it probably got a pair further back there. It's not a horse with a like a devastating sprint, but it can build and like you said, off a fast tempo. So if she can settle a pair closer and get a crack at them and sort of let it flow into the race, it's going to be hard for something to to make a big run from the back and run it down. So if we can put the leaders away, I think you've found the right horse. Shooting for gold was interesting. Blinkers on, didn't trial in the blinkers. Um, J-Mac, obviously, bookings uh, probably important there. And uh, I thought Deepaw was interesting too. Just trialed really fresh mm. and uh, always been a horse that's got a big finish. So a fast run 1,000, he could just whack home, like he could rip home at 20 to 1. So, yeah, I thought Deepaw was the uh, interesting horse, especially if economics doesn't get a run because it can improve on, on top of the ground. Hundred percent, and they'll just be the, the race shape will suit Depor exceptionally well. So I think you can get sort of around thirty dollars. So no surprise that uh, Top Sporter got their foot on it at twenty one dollars. But uh, hopefully, a uh, a good way to start for us. All right, the next race what, we're going to have just a, before you go, Scoot. I just oh, yeah? just before I forget. Yes. Just while on the while on the while on the train of horses, we thought that were cactus. What about roll on high? Oh, yeah, I do know. that. Oh, huh? What's going on there? <laughs> and like it, it had tempo to suit it, but. Um, Nothing else really ran on it. It was really weird, wasn't it? And it was sort of in a you – know, I could watch the replay. Like it was back with some decent horses and, yeah, it's oh man, <laughs> far out. It's hard to work out. These, yeah. oh, and half of them are running well, half of them flopping. It's – Bottom – but, yeah, the only thing I could sort of put that down to, I guess it was what, soft seven. It's gone from a bottomless 15 to then a soft seven and then it's just found the absolute sweet spot and it's – There was no real money for it. It's still actually, 20 to one or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, going off know. her first run up in Sydney that time. You, if you just saw that run, and it's like carbon copy. Oh, and that's right. And you'd be taking six to four and happy to do it. Mm. Um, probably not over that trip, to be honest. But mm. happy to put yeah egg on face. I I, I did. I, I marked the horse to see. Oh, you could. I mean, it's just, it's just, I it's should have one. You on. say, I tell you, is he a pen one and the, 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 the caper? How many times have we seen it? 
I think I had six in the quarter and you can <laughs> yeah, get close. Of course. Well, yeah, and course. We keep, we've, we've all loved the horse and the dead giveaway, John McLeod's tipped out of the yard. He's had a couple of hundred on it, so he's that's the red alert. He's yeah. saying that the horse yeah. still looks there and still with us, hasn't dropped off condition-wise. And, again, it can be just slapping you straight in the face and you still miss it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and Zara too. It was funny when I was looking. I was trying to look in the accounts. I thought, oh Jesus Christ, Walt's on here. He would have just. He would have definitely put this in his quaddy numbers in one of his wider mm. quaddies. And I went looking through, and I'm like, he hasn't. I either. Just thought he was dead. I watched the last start and just did nothing. Like he just hit the line for 20 meters, and I'll throw you in. No, mm. flounder. But anyway, just goes to show, <laughs> it's 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 never simple. Uh, the chief spear, or the spear chief, back the other way around, is the next one we're going to have a look at. Race five, and it's a fifteen hundred meter event. And Yellow Brick's the favourite. Top Sport two or seventy. Water goes four into three twenty. Coast Watch six fifty. Kalino ten dollars. Namazu twelve dollars. Gravina no jockey, so probably stays in Sydney twelve dollars. Devastate the Kiwi fourteen dollars. Times Square twenty six into twenty one for Biggie. And then you got Surf Dance, a second up, uh, twenty six dollars. Irish Songs, twenty six, and then uh, yeah, Mississippi Prince. But uh, the horse uh, Walt likes here. This is Walt's race. Uh, is uh, is what he goes. So got the cot. We've spoken about this a, a fair bit. But um, you think he's well up to these? Yeah, and he, he's had everything go wrong his first two, and then it looked pear shaped for quite a while here. But then it sort of worked out absolutely perfect. Got to the right part. Uh, much weaker field here. He did carry I think sixty one or sixty and a half. So drops like five and a half, six kilos into this. 1500 back onto a firmer ground, uh, no trouble. You got Devastate, Mississippi Prince, Surf Dancer, Namazu, all desperate leaders like go forward horses. So there should be good tempo. Water grows drawn two, should just settle in a similar spot to it did there. Uh, no matter how the track's sort of racing by this stage, he should have a good idea and should be able to sort of adapt to, to whatever is presented. Just didn't think there were too many well set up in the race. Um, obviously, Yellow Brick's a dangerous horse. What's he going to do with him? Is he going to go forward? Is he going to take a sip? Well, it's well, he's a very similar horse, weird. isn't he? And, um, yeah, he's sort of drawn a little bit awkward too. He, firmer ground's the, the key to that horse. If it's going to improve and be what everyone thinks it is, I just $2.70, it's just what? But, uh, yeah, the, that, that's got to be the key to the horse improving and uh, it does get, you know, it uh, goes from the best jockey in, in New Zealand, Opie, to the second best in J-Mac. So a ride a downgrade for uh, a yellow brick. But, um, yeah, he, it's it should get its chance, to be honest. I sort of scouring for dangers. Coast Watch is going really well. They've done a good job with him since they've bought him, uh, the Freedmans. And uh, 1,500 may be a little bit of a query, but it gets a soft draw and uh, I thought Irish Songs is actually going quite well. Um, coming out of, I think, the same race as Yellow Brick and whatever, it's it's probably going to be a big price and and the blowout. I probably just wouldn't want to let it beat me. But I'm I just sort of kept coming back to Water Goes. Is you know, it's either Water Goes or uh, a pineapple for me. So I, I was kind of happy to take that nine to four, five to two range it rather than and take on Yellow Brick. Yeah, I was sort of I was sort of kicking up for Gravina. I thought it was a good run, and there was a horse that I think just kept smashing into it. Whether it was amenable. Uh, it just steered it from maybe, I don't know, three or four off the fence and then pushed Gravina back onto the rail at Scone that day and had never actually had a crack at uh, 1,500 metres. But, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed that Matt Dale's going to uh, Well, it's weird stay it's drawn in wide Sydney. in Sydney. But, That's um, a hard, it looks a harder race. Mm, yeah, I, I, and I agree with you. It's weird, no rider. But uh, he's a pretty sneaky character, you know, you never know. Well, could throw it in. Yeah, well, you never know. You never know. He's, he's, no, he's no deal, Matt Dale. So, uh, you know, he's not just going to put it. In the in the wrong race because it's an easier drive from Goulburn. He'll um yeah it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens with it. Mm. Kalino wouldn't shock me, but I sort of lent Gravina over it, and then time Jeez, it went bad the other day. Kalino, I yeah, was on it. just didn't finish off uh, strongly enough. And then Times Square, uh, if it was completely dead, I could I could sort of see Beggy uh, peaking this horse up here. But it, it's again, it's it gets miles back in its race, and I echo what John says about uh, Irish songs. That horse is absolutely airborne, and Louise White can. Pull off yeah, a Malian, big, big Malian, price winner. Malian. Just put a new jockey on it, Louise. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so uh, definitely uh, looking to attack uh, Yellow Brick and definitely uh, bet around it for sure. Race six is the next race that we're going to have a look at. It's the uh, Queensland Day Stakes uh, event over 1,200 metres, and we've got Hedge the favourite here, $2.80, Inhibition $6, Moravia $7, uh, Fortuneer $8.50, Astraka $11, Squirt the Law $11, Tiger Shark $11, Genzano $16, and you got Out Wade uh, and Zia, Show Me Mercy's out the gate there at $34 as well. But uh, the horse I'm willing to forgive, and it's not a horse that I've probably found since back in, what, the Golden Rose or the Coolmore Stud, I think the last time I backed him, but... 
he had the ultimate gear change here, uh, Moravio. He's just in between those two horses, so he sort of had a tiny bumping duel with Safrado, and I just don't really think he um, re- let down on this uh, bottomless track. And um, I think the second horse there, uh, Selai, has run well since. There's a roll on high. She's out the back there in the uh, the white and black, sort of still sort of whacking away. You've seen her just come out and win. But I thought it was a pretty good effort for um from Moravia that day. He was first up uh, off, a, off a significant break. He had a couple of trials, but to then be gelded and then uh, continue to sort of hit the line there on a track that I don't, didn't think would suit him at all. Uh, the key also is marks are a stick. So if the horse was going no good, I think he would have done a, a D lane on uh, on that Waller horse and he would have jumped off. But um, I think it's $7 from a price point. I think the form around sort of hedged and uh, the other horse that you can sort of draw a line for, that uh, Celluli, uh, who ran second, uh, oh, sorry, actually beat hedged uh, down at uh, Caulfield that day. It uh, it was running alongside uh, Moravia there as well. And with hedged, uh, I think he just, they could be going to the well one more, one one time too many like he's been in Flemington he went up to Ramwick uh back to back to Melbourne now he's back to Queensland I just think they might be just trying to squeeze a lemon absolutely dry here and I was sort of thinking that Moravia was the top pick I didn't mind a striker uh, as a bit of a danger and then yeah like where did where do you go from there if uh if show me mercy was only having a barrier trial first up perhaps but he blew out pretty quickly and yeah, it, he'd, he'd have to have a, a pretty big leap to uh, turn that around. But at $34, show me mercy is probably a horse that I don't want uh, beating me at the price. Um, and then he ran alongside a horse called uh, Genzano. So they were the, I guess, roughies for me. But I thought Moravio was sort of an auto bet, seven fifty versus hedged at the $2.80 quote. I thought that was the the, the right form. I didn't um, I didn't look at the betting. When you said $7, I was like, wow, I thought I assumed it'd be favourite. Um Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I, she, this is the horse that I was talking about, Shin on a striker. And it, I think Sherry's ridden it its last two, maybe. Mm. or yep. And he hasn't done a lot wrong. And the horse has kind of camped up to win and, and got fought off last start. It was second up there. And uh, Shin, just, you know, these sort of horses that a little bit of uh, need cuddling uh, he, and perfect draw. This is the sort of horse Shin can put a, a couple of lengths on, I think. So yeah, I, I agree with everything you said about uh, Moravi, to be honest. There's the, the 50-50, isn't it? Like, I, I can't understand why they ran it in a 1,200 first up on a heavy track. It's a, it, it resumed over 900 and 1,000 metres its previous preps, and to put it 1,200 first up heavy track after being gelding was a, was a huge task. So four weeks between then, if it's bounced off that, it probably should be favourite. If it hasn't, you'll know, but you're getting seven dollars and you know, you're getting ten dollars or so around Ostraka. I think they're a really good two horse play. I thought uh, inhibitions was next best, but it's sort of five weeks between runs coming out of a weird race. But I think that race was stronger than what people give it credit for. So I think they're the top three. I'm I'm happy to sort of take on uh, uh, the Kent horse as Hedged. well. But I, mm. I think if we found the right two horses here for sure, especially if it's a, a little bit firmer too. Uh, DK, any opinion about Hedged or any thoughts on any of these runners? No, I didn't get the one, mate. I just looked at the Oaks, Scooty. So we're we going to get to that. We are oh, going to get to We've got five more races to do in yeah, Queensland. Yeah, we're a Queensland, Queensland show now. Yeah, that's... We are a Queensland racing show. But no, up <laughs> next, you, you've called it. It's the uh, you, You've read the run sheet. It's race eight. It's the uh, it's the Oaks. And uh, let's have a look at the betting at Top Sports Style at Oak. Your horse that uh, you sold a fair few people in. You had the Aussie Mail. So, the Aussie uh, Mail, well done, yeah. DK. Yeah, we sort of poo-pooed you, but uh, too strong. $3.70 favourite here, J-Max Sticks, which is a big thing. And obviously, uh, they did take a long time to select their jockeys at Camp Waller, as they sometimes do, but they just got to get it right. Molly Bloom is uh, second in the market, $5. Ahariri has been the big uh, firmer here, eight fifty into five fifty. dollars Marymount Buller, $9. Moonlight Magic, $15. Good Banter, 18 Miss Jolene, 19 Amazonian Lass, 21 Kind Words, 21 And uh, you're getting much, much better the rest. A couple of replays we'll have a look at. The first one is Scarlet Oak. And uh, you can see her just sitting when I thought she got absolute uh, PR here this day. And the the roughie that I sort of like here is in the Chris Lee's colours. It's uh, it's called Kind Words. And you can see her bouncing up and down, not really getting a clear crack at him in the uh, the light green with the blue s- sash. Hair and Mount Buller back to the inside as well. So yeah, it's in the wrong inside, part of the track. Good banter outside it. Uh, Miss Jolene flying. Hope, Miss Jolene. Molly Bloom, one from the outside, kind words, is the one that sort of looks held up uh, back in the middle and looks like it nearly goes to the line hard held. Mm. 
I thought uh, Kyle Words was every bit as good as uh, Scarlet Oak that day. And then speaking of uh, lack of detail in student reports, let's have a look at Ahariri and we'll uh, wind back the clock to the uh, SA Derby here. And we've missed some of the interference, but you can sort of see her in the black. And, and that's and more the, Munger directly outside it. So yeah, in the orange. So coming she's, around it. She's, got, she's already copped two hits there. She's copped another hit there. War Munger's sort of outskirting wide in the OTI colours. The two in front of our Herrera are still having a bumping duel. Bang, she gets cannoned again. So I think we're about 300 metres from home. Here comes Warmonger. Who's put 10 on him in the derby. Yeah. And then as D- to steal DK's favourite quote, she still has the temerity to pick herself up and keep uh, charging and hitting the line. And she did that 2,800 back to uh, 2,500 that day. She's had the freshen. And that's probably the only real chink in the armour. She has to come back to 2,200 metres again. So, Yeah, if it was 2,500 oh, and she got beat in this, I'd go, I'd walk nude to Darwin. <laughs> um, yeah, like knowing all this, well, obviously it's a, it's a weird statement. She'll start favourite, I think. Uh, you can't really knock Scarlet Oak, but, you know, a bit like last start, we did. I didn't, we knocked her at the price. I thought she was like, though she was a good, she won the race. I thought Marymount Buller was a better run than her there. And, and your horse is interesting, but I don't think, I think it's a wet tracker, but it's dangerous, kind words for sure. Mm. Um, sort of jumped the gun here. I, I just don't see how they beat Ariri if everything's equal. Uh, the 2200 back in this, I think she's one of the more natural looking, scary stayers of all time. And we were all probably questioning whether that form was any good out of Adelaide. And then Warmonger's come out and done what it did. So, you know, if you, I don't know. I just think this horse has got more upside than Warmonger, and we'll see what it did there. Like Johnny Allen's super strange selection. I'm sitting there like this horse was still thirteen, fourteen dollars two days ago, and when it came out barrier twenty one, and then eventually John Allen, you were like, well, Where maybe they we'll get him? a price here, right? And then it goes eight, nine dollars into five fifty an hour later. So I think everyone in the world's found it. it's not hard to find. Uh, if you're matching up that form versus the the Scarlet Oak Ma- Marymount Buller form, and then you've got to add in, I think the other wild card, not wild card, it's well in the betting, is Moonlight Magic, who actually beat the rest very easily in the Derby mm. last week. So it was seven weeks, six weeks in between runs going into that. Blinkers on. Nice pipe. Po- po- now backs up seven days later, coming back to 2200 here from 25. So, but she's interesting. She could, she she really did beat the rest, you know, by two or three lengths there. So uh, I, yeah, I think for me it's Ahariri, uh, you know, all things being equal and a solid tempo, I think she'll win. And if not, um, I think Marymount Bull is the pick out of the Scarlet Oak form line and, and Moonlight Magic. So I'll probably chop out on those two. And the horse that's just a little bit weird is Unique Ambition. Uh, sort of sat wide and looked a much probably better win than it was at Scone last start. Um, but just is it Johnny Sargent, little, you know, he can sneak one in there. Yep. I don't even know what price it is. I haven't looked at the betting. But, $67. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's just got a bit of left formy, weird form that it just, and it's done a few things in its life that were, that only good horses can do. So, you know, maybe 60 to 1, I'd, I'd make it a winner too. But um, betting up for me, uh, Hariri and have been for a couple of weeks, uh, Moonlight Magic into, and um, Marymount Buller will probably dig me out of going to uh, Aldi and begging for a job if it gets beat. John likes the race by the sound of it. DK. Oh yeah, well, I was with we were with we were on with Hariri in Adelaide together, and um, how can you drop off him after a run like that? And then same what Warmonger. So you know that form, that fresh Adelaide form, fresh into Queensland's going to work. So um, yeah, I I found it hard to uh, see around it. Um, it used to they've just when did they drop it back in trip? Is it this year they've dropped it back from twenty four to twenty two? So that's the only thing I think that plays mm. a little bit plays against it. They've dropped they've dropped it back from the twenty two hundred. Um, was it always? Oh, was it always been? I thought they I thought it used to be. No, I half. think it, I'm pretty sure it wasn't, but I'm not sure when they changed it. When they changed it, yeah. Um, oh, what am I missing? I, I, I thought Molly Blooms was a very good run in that roses. I thought it she was, was wide. She sat wide, right? She sat back and wide and sort of come wider. So all, all the things that finished in front of her had suck runs. They mm. all had suck runs where they are on the rail, Scarlet Oak, just having suck, suck, suck. You know, it gave the thing who followed, ran second, followed it in the run, it gave it the guard up. It's punched the breeze the whole way. It's still stuck on against all these things that have had soft suck runs. Um, and, uh, oh, yes, no, but they're all important. You know, we had the team dinner at the under-12s team dinner <laughs> at Macca's last night. So sort of Aussie was there and I said, yes, Oz. And he said, oh, we're all going up. We're all going up. He said, 35 of us are going up because we're going up the Oaks, going to park at the Gold Coast. And I said, uh, what, what, what's your thinking? He said, oh, I see. he said advantage Molly Bloom on Sunday, Saturday, I think. So, um, 
he seems to think Molly Bloom might have an edge on uh, Scarlet Oak this week. So that's 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 from the Oz. Big, and it's got shit, hasn't back it? Back to dry, though, as well. And that's back the to thing. dry's Scarlet, a big tick. That's a big tick. Scarlet Oak could have been just flattered the last two starts on a wet track. She's just seen wet track, wet track. Does she go as good? And then she, I thought she, was, she had absolute PR last time. Yeah. I, and she ran fast last section, but she was sort of... Uh, entitled. Well, she didn't look strongest on the line, did she? No. No. No, it's an interesting race. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, ah, Hariri, uh, kind words. And I, I think, yeah, Moonlight Magic's the other fitness improver that I'd be uh, keeping your winner as well. Marymount Bullers looks like a scary horse, but as Walt says, some crazy rider changes. And with kind words, I, she's a written tycoon. So obviously, I, I sort of like the breeding aspect of it, but it's only 2,200 meters and not sort of 24. So maybe it doesn't matter. The, the Jay Allen is a great rider of stays. So that's his, that's his sweet spot. So that I think that might have played into it. You know, he want, you know, Mar- I'm hoping that's it. it. Yeah, because it's a bit of a left field one, otherwise, isn't it? Like all of them, yeah, he's a jumps jockey and all this, all in New South Wales, and he'd come out and win an Itotsu and all these things, you know, and ride him a treat. Um, I had no problem putting him on in Group Ones. Um, he's a his sweet spot. He gets his timing right on stays. He's a very good rider of stays. We we are a Queensland racing show, but it's good to see you boys are finally coming around to the to the AF. Mr. Quick, we might have Adelaide form. We might have. An Adelaide form trifecta in this year's Caulfield or Melbourne Cup or both. We've got the map. Oh god. We've got our Hariri well, and Warmonger. That's the that's the interesting idea. I could just go one, two, three. Some said something I like I hope it's trying. <laughs> ah Hariri. Like, uh, <laughs> anyway. But it's like a benchmark seventy something horse at the moment. And uh has qualified nothing. Like it's won the St. Ledger. It might be higher than seventy, but um it's got to win this race to to start getting into all know, the big the races, Caulfield Cups and things like that. Because it's not a horse that's going to come out and win a goddamn or or something. Is it first? It's not. It's not going to be winning weight for age races on the way through. You wouldn't think so. You know they'll be desperate to win this race. Mm. Looks a great bet. God give it strength. Racing uh, Queensland.com.au has got uh, a great website, Punner's Friend. It's free. Uh, race replays, stewards report, sectional data, stride length. Uh, DK's been uh, loving it. It's, I, don't, uh, it's I got... don't know what to do with that stride length. I just I like it's there and everything. I don't know what to do with I'd it. Like to look it's at there. it. <laughs> <It's there>. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to interpret it or what to <laughs> It's not the size, it's how you use it, DK. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you get around it. So I think we've still got uh, about seven weeks left of uh, the, the carnival up in Queensland and uh, they're holding the fort. Rose Hill couldn't get uh, couldn't get through their program last week, so all eyes were on uh, Queensland, and they'll be on again with the uh, the Group One Oaks. So uh, big shout out to uh, Racing Queensland, and can't wait again for not this weekend, but next week when we've got uh, the Group One Stradbroke. So absolutely cracking card there, and it doesn't stop there; it goes all the way through to the Tatsiara. So best time to bet in Queensland is right now with all these uh, good horses pointed there. Randwick, John. I just realised we hadn't done Ramwick. I feel like we've been. Hey. I think we're like we've been proving races for four and a half years, but uh, that's all right. We're getting to Ramwick. You like it? Can you have a look at the uh, most current forecast to see whether uh, I just heard it. Wash I a massive away? rain band across the east coast, isn't it? Well, I just 40, heard it on the radio on the way in here. Or something was the last prediction I saw for Friday. Flash flooding. Flash flooding. I heard. At, where? See it. Well, Sydney. Well, uh, uh, Wherever DK goes, flash flooding. Okay, so today twenty four mil, eighteen mil Friday, and then one point seven Saturday. So oh, it's, it's right. cats and dogs. Five. I'm, I'm going to say it's, two, it's, it's two be, words. It'll be a good four. Cloud seeding. Cloud seeding. It's all through races. the press. Oh, yeah. I don't even know where the rail is, but they should be coming down the outside. It's got to be heavy. It has to be heavy. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing, but the farmers have gone well in uh, New South Wales and they bloody well need to be. Ramwick Race 5 is the first one you're going to have a look at. 1,600 metre event and it's gonna. It's already a soft seven, so I'm tipping <laughs> if, it's be heavy. if all that weather hits, it's definitely going to be in the heavy range. Red Breast is a favourite, 320. Gay Bot, It's a one to 460. Missy Mauler, $6. Nana's Wish, 650. Baker Lou. Walt's got a hold of this one, has he? 21 into 15. Destiny's Delight, $15. Boot Scooter, named after me, $17. Prince of Pesa, 21. And similar quote, all better for the rest. It's a Wonder is the horse that uh, caught your eye oh, last start. You're going to show this replay. In the, uh, oh, in the Wagga Guineas. So mad on speed day. There's a race last. up front on uh, Invincible Ninja or whatever it's called. Black and pink. Who's come out and won again since the leader, and it had the bias in its favour, and she actually rode it extremely well, just like um, solid, strong tempo throughout. So this is It's a Wonder coming down the outside, breaking the hearts of a nation. And uh, it's, it's been five weeks since it's raced here, and I, I think they were sort of trying to push it out to 1,800, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, has performed on a heavy track, uh, ran really well. I think it's 1-1 and, um, and finished off nicely after it was given a sore back the other time. 
Uh, this race is the only replay shown. I think yeah. it is. So Red Breast is actually uh, probably one of my faves too, and I actually backed it to win the Oaks, which uh, it's obviously not in the Oaks, and uh, they brought it up to Queensland, ran it in 1,800 on heavy track, and it just popped about 600 out. It was completely cactus. It's trialled since, and I thought it went just as bad in the trial as it went in that race. So uh, if Gay can revive that horse, Gay's not really known for backing distance. This horse has got some head noise. I think it's got a bit of maturing to do. So it being $3.20, it, be, it became a race that I wanted to really have a good look at. And um, obviously it's a wonders uh, horse I'm in love with too, but I just think it's it's flummed an absolute perfect race. I think it's got 52 uh, wet track should mean that, you know, wide draw and, and Jay can fall asleep as much as he likes and should be able to still get the horse into the race and uh, and round these up, I think. Nana's Wishes was okay, sort of ran second to Scarlet Oak last start, which looks good on paper, but really slow tempo there, which kept her in touch with that horse, I think. Baker Lou, you mentioned, is actually flying, and I think um, if it's coming out of a midway, which is never great, uh, but it's sort of 15 to 1, it's okay. Uh, Missy Muller had the best run you've ever seen in your life first up. Weird horse that gets its head up. There's a few versions of it. Uh, McChicken aboard, um, second up mile heavy tracking and likely to be down on the inside. Just everything in this horse's favour that you could possibly have. It's a wonder, I think. And $4.80 seems, um, you know, well and truly good shopping for mine. The only thing is that I've probably spent an hour in the last month filling betting tickets with this horse in about four or five different races and there's been abandonments in it. I think it was an emergency and didn't get a run. Last at Newcastle last week, they called the races off. So, uh, yeah, I, I just think she'll go very, very close. It's a wonder. Yeah, the old girl won a two rack. I think Michelle Payne rode her in a, uh, a Caulfield Cup once upon a time, Alley Wonder. So, bred to be bloody anything, this horse, DK. You'd remember that one back in when you'd won the Caulfield Cup. Yeah, yeah, remember it. Yeah, he's yeah. going back there, Scoot. So it's a wonder for uh, for Walt. Definitely eat up the sixteen hundred and the uh, the wet track should be no drama. Buy done deal. Race eight is the uh, Lord Mayor's Cup at Randwick, not to be confused with the uh, one at Brisbane last weekend. But it's a two thousand meter race at Randwick. Sir Lucan's a favourite, four dollars eighty. Brings the he's uh, he's a shocker form. Williamsburg five fifty. Sabark six fifty. Elias uh, seven dollars fifty. Star of India eight fifty. Skylab nine dollars fifty. Lions Raw ten dollars. Hosier is $10, and you've got Hopeful 15, Baby Rider $19, and pretty much write your ticket the rest. Let's have a look at a couple of different replays here. Sir Lucan in that uh, he's a shocker run last time. I think it was at Newcastle here. Yeah, so um, sat wide for most of the way, and then uh, then Rachel pressed the button at about the 600-meter mark, and you can see what it did there. And, and he's a shocker did get healed up a little bit and, and had to make a little bit longer run, but the, the run of the second horse eventually, Sir Lucan, was still astronomical. You can yeah. see the gaps they're putting on the rest, and – He's a shocker, came out and won, and, and I think there were huge, huge gaps again next start. So uh, dropping back from 2,200, I've just bagged Gay for not being able to drop back in distance, but this is a little bit different. It was second up there, back to 2,000 here, third up, um, should be good. And uh, what's this? This is this the is, Bark. This is the Scone Cup. This is Skylab okay. the Scone Cup. The Mighty Lair. Yeah, this was a good for the Quaddy Killer uh, or Quaddy Filler for us. So Skylab here we had four trials coming into this, which is abnormal, but I think they dead set set him for this race first up. The track had the edge off it, but not um, not soft, soft. And you can see he sort of rounds them up. Waterford was a little bit lucky, unlucky coming through the middle, but I still thought Skylab was holding him. And I just think that he's a he, he grows a leg on a wet track and he's a little bit forgotten here. So uh, 16 to 2,000, usually second up heavy track, not ideal, but it did have that four trial. So treating it as sort of third, fourth up. And uh, yeah, I just thought he was the, the clear danger to uh, Sir Lucan, who's drawn wide and will roll forward. There is a bit of speed, which is the other reason for wanting to probably be with a horse like Skylab, having one sort of sit midfield or worse and uh, and having uh, Sir Lucan, you're, you're up on speed horse. If he gets across and ends up in the sort of first four with cover, I think it'll go extraordinarily close. I thought it would just win last set. That was filthy when the races were off because Waterford and Williamsburg were uh, distance queries with that sort of heavy rain coming. I thought they might get bogged down. The horse that no one really knows what it's going to do is uh, Benny Elias. Is it number 10, Benny mm. Elias? It's, uh, Iliot, I think it's had I three trials. Its last trial was probably its best. I don't know whether Tim got the choice between the two. I don't know, but I know Tim trialled Elias and uh, it's got some solid overseas form. And uh, it's it's a bit of a scary horse, and I see there's been money for it too, which is which is also scary. I don't really know what to do with it, but because it's around $8 maybe just for the peace of mind, you just cut that 12% out and um, maybe save your uh, save your mental space by saving on I don't know what it'll do. It might get out late too, but uh, I, I think Sir Lucan will go really close and Skylab sort of $10 or $11 is, 
he's a good horse. I'd nearly probably make them both very similar winners, to be fair, at the, the, the different prices. Mm, I'd be surprised. Yeah, Salukan just looks cherry right. Looks like a wet track. I just got everything in favour, mm. and we just uh, pray for Rachel that she gives us an ab- absolute peach. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, the horse got good. I'd rather it drawn wide than in, to be honest. Um, so I think you know, with even luck, she flows across from that outside drawer and, and uh, touch wood. Uh, there, it's it's four in front, and it's not uh, easy shocker coming after it. It's the mighty Skylab. Outstanding stuff. All right, that's a uh, quick look at uh, Randwick uh, kick stream this week just to keep yourself sharp for uh, the final. Are you going to do a little stream? Man, I just started. Uh, yeah, yeah you, you used to it, aren't you? in the groove. No, it was good. You, you good. like I, it, actually, you I do like it. I do like it, even though I get abuse. I don't know. I got in trouble for tipping Warmonger on the stream but not declaring it unbeatable in the, the thing. And that's a, that's just the nature. They don't understand that you're, you're playing a game in your situation where you've got to turn over your full bank what like was that down to like I think it was down to twelve hundred or something at that stage. So I, I'm not going to go and have twelve hundred on a six to four chance. You're trying to you're playing a game as well as the race, aren't you? So it's uh it's not reality, and um, that's what you know some people fail to understand. But you know I really enjoy it, and I think for the people that are in there, we sort of have a bit of fun and you know learn off each other, and and uh, it's good fun. Racingwatch.com, there you get more info about that. And uh, you can jump in the Telegram or the Discord that always or just roars seven days a week. So make sure you check that out too. Uh, Donny, he's been on fire. Uh, he had Ella's World. Uh, he he's Yeah, I think he, had, he sent that as a four-unit play last week. So he's absolutely airborne. So it doesn't matter where you get it, whether you get it off the show or whether you jump onto Little Birdie Syndicate. I sort of echo with, with Walt says, uh, in 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 terms of that, we didn't we didn't send Warmonger as a tip, but we sent it through the email. So you try and cover it off uh, where you can, and um, it's really hard just to I guess narrow down your best bets, and you don't always get it a hundred percent right. Similar to I guess Gord last week, he probably had a massive bet and then stuffed it up in his own bloody uh, little tournament. So doing our best to uh, get the info out there, and hopefully you can uh, do bet your best with it as well, um, and slot it into your information, and uh, hopefully uh, you're making it winning information. Donnie's best this week is another shorty. I think he's worried about his streak now. G'day, boys. Going for four in a row this week, and I think we're going to get it. Race three, number eight, Amelius. Looks way too good for him. Uh, it's coming down from Sydney where it sat last, circled the field, one in very good time in sectionals. There's nothing here. I think it'll win. Dollar seventy. it does look a good thing. Good luck. Just going J Car, Annabelle, Canara, Imperialist, the dangers. There's nothing like backing a horse that pitched in at 25s last start <laughs> and stepping into the four to five. There's nothing like it, the Donster. <laughs> oh, geez. It, it, it actually went really nicely first up. And then last start, there was a bad map. And I think there was a, it just looked like it was going to be last and up against a decent field. It did round him up really nicely. So, you know, it's got good promise, but geez, he's got a big set of. Co Jones, hasn't he, the big he, fella? He's fearless. Mm. Um, that It actually beat a horse. And I, I, I sort of skipped through some of those Ramwick races and I had uh, Swift Falcon as a black booker. And then I think I mentioned it to you boys on the Thursday, completely forgot about it. And then luckily, I didn't hear a word from you boys. And then this thing is the horse that knocked it off. Thank mm. Christ. Or else I would have been. They filthy. came out of the same race, I yeah. think. And they were similar, right? One, mm. yeah, your, yeah, just sort of a bit green, yours. And then drew yours drew one. So it was like, and it was 10 to 1 or something. So you're like, well, it's a much stronger chance of being in the right spot and improving. Whereas this one, I think, drew wide and, and I think Alicia rode it and it was sort of, you knew it was going to go back and it's just, it was dominant. So, yeah, I can see what you can see. I just, uh, the price is, is scary. scary. Imperialist barrier 14. Yeah. And it's, I think, I don't know. It's, I think it's an ex prep horse. Um, we got it right with it last time. I mean, we come up really short. We sort of bet around it. But, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think there's, like, from the brief look, I, I, there's not too many scary horses in the race. It's just the price. All right, maybe uh, throw it in a multi then. Top sport steam uh, need to bounce back. Happen, had a couple of quiet weeks, but uh, yeah, had a little bit of bad luck as well, especially with Magic Time last week. Uh, Eagle Farms, the first bet here. Race five, number eight. What it goes six six five at four dollars. So this is obviously Walt's bet. The next one's for DK. Not sure if he's had a look at uh, Flemington race five, but it's race five, number ten, and that is Burlington Gate. Yeah, it's um, it one last start. Uh... Brad rode it. Brad gave it the beautiful Brad ride. Third back, three back the fence. Don't go around a horse. Get clear one easily. So it's in form. Uh, it's drawn for a similar run. It's, I think it's drawn a low draw. Drawn for a similar run going up to Flemington. That's an even race. I think it's five or six dollars the field. But um, it's a fit in form horse. Who's going to get the right run? Mm. Gee, it uh, looks looks like a really tricky race. That one. A lot yeah. of in form horses, but look at it. a lot of ones and twos and threes in the mm. last couple of starts. Bloody scary. Uh, the next one is race nine at uh, Flemington, number seventeen. 
lose some, win more, and at 664 at $4. So that looks like a bit of a partial job there maybe uh, into $3.40 now. Yeah, hard, hard not to be uh, hard, to, to, hard not to like that bet. Um, so it, oh, I quoted this: the jollies when they bring over. I got the wrong one last week, even though the IG being in the quicksand didn't help it. But um, uh, losing some, lose more. Just one as it like down the straight. I was MD when he got off. Said I don't think I'll. He thought at the furlong I won't even have to touch this, and then he said it started looking at the clock down the grandstand. So he had to give it one. So it still had plenty in reserve. Um, comes up in goes up in class, but drops down to fifty four and a half. Um, uh, Rick Chantel Jolly said they've got spring carnival aspirations for it, so um, it's uh, it's hard not to like with that 54 and a half off its win the other day down the straight. Mm, and the uh, the Bifrost form uh, had a winner yesterday, I think, whether it was that Oak Hill or whatever, so you can sort of tie in that form line to another couple of winners, so yeah, lose some, win more is a top sports steamer. Next one, uh, Morfittville race six, number six, Nickish 444 at uh, 550 oh, here, so this is they're naming horses after you in Adelaide now, <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's a Stokes Kayla Crowther jobby there. So I had a look at that when you said it through it. Um, so it, it took a starts to win its maiden, but it, it had no luck beforehand being wide. And what it does, uh, it's the map. I think there, it's going to map beautifully. It's um, and it loves Morfield. I think it's and this other stable mate, which is Runaway, run the maiden at uh, Cranbourne. It's drawn quite wide, so um, I could sort of said, oh, why are they backing it over the other stable mate? And I, I think that's the reason. It's going to map a lot better, and it likes to prove it at the track. Yeah, I haven't got to that that one there yet, but uh, yeah, if Kayla's on, that might be uh, the way to go from the Stokes Yard. That's uh, that's the top sports steamers. The last one, yeah, Wagga wasn't was a bit yucky. I've got that in the notes here, DK. But uh, this week for uh, DK out wide, your provincial best. Uh, Swan Hill Carnival's on this weekend, so uh, naturally, yeah, we head to Swan Hill. We don't have to worry about night meetings are over. Thank God, uh, no, uh, they're done and dusted, so we can um, get in some proper races. And Swan Hill, no, no better track than betting at Swan Hill. Love Swan Hill. So uh, first day of the carnival, Friday race. I didn't even write down what race was. I think it's race two, isn't it? The horse called Parista. Uh, yeah, Henry. Yeah, Henry. So uh, purchased from New Zealand off a trial over there by the Bald Eagle. Glennie Ingram, I reckon, found this one and saw, saw the owners in. Uh, gave, it, gave it a clean up for the bull. Nice clean up for the bull first up and then... At the ball, I, I, I thought it'd be hard to beat in that maiden at the ball, and um, the market just threw it out and uh, worked out why uh, Henry said, was quoted post race saying its behaviour pre race was deplorable. They couldn't get the saddle on it, and then uh, the market obviously played up in the yard, and the market just bid it. Uh, copped a big hip and shoulder on the turn, which punched it out into the worst ground. And um, so that was a forgive run for mine there. Still ran all right. Uh, so it's obviously been back to the jump outs, jumped out lovely. Um, Draws, Henry loves the carnivals. He's a carnival trainer. So he's reset, reset for the Swan Hill Carnival. This time it draws the low draw, draws two. Jay Allen, um, you want to be up forward the way the track plays there. Inside's best, and then it gradually goes off, off, off as the three days go out. So second race of the carnival, the inside will be the place to be. They can follow Miss Winslet or something else there and uh, get every possible. And I expect it to bounce back. Parista. Outstanding. So Swan Hill Friday, race two, number six, Parista. Have you seen the jump out or of uh, Miss Extravaganza? It could be a sneaky, Mitch Friedman. Uh, Miss no? Extravaganza, well, is a Jay Allen. Jay Allen's on the thing in the first, it'll win. So Mitch won mm-hmm. the Mitch run the 1,200 maiden there last year with an impressive debutant. So Jay Allen's his man. Uh, Jay Allen is on the thing in the first, that's odds on, probably win. Mm-hmm. And um, Jay Allen would have said, no, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm sticking with Parista here. So that's I'd say that's why he's not Mitch's. He's sticking with Parista, nice. so I'll stick with Jay Allen. Johnny Allen will go bang, bang at Swan Hill, get his confidence up, and he'll just shoot up to Queensland on Buddy Qantas, and he'll get the chocolates for us with a Ahariri. Right. And we'll go happily down to Melbourne for the Stradbroke final. Who, we will. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you and I, yeah, we'll, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. So will you pay for dinner that. in Melbourne if uh, Ahariri wins? No. no. <laughs> hey, I, I will. You're making me go to Melbourne. <laughs> you're making me go to Melbourne. DK's there. He knows how frozen he is. He's like, oh, I'm, I'm cold here in the mornings at the moment. What's going on? Yeah, it's something. It's not good. It's, it's brutal. It's and buddy, J Max got the, the the layers. You know, the homemade layers that he's just he's just, he'll be in shorts and a t-shirt down there and, and loving it. Is there a more relaxed customer that you've ever seen? Like. Then, then Johnny McLeod, DK, he's, no, he's I love him. unflappable. Yeah, he's so good. Yeah, I don't know. He must have, whenever he sold his business and did that deal with Mark Reed, what was it, 15 years ago now, I'm 
I'm reckoning might have got a poultice out of it because um, there's no, no stress in the world, regardless for ever since. So, um, yeah, oh, loves loves such a cruise character. Co- great company. Like when you're out with him, you're around him. He's just great company. Just makes you feel good being around someone like that. So that's a great trait, isn't it? Exactly what he does. He does. He makes you feel good. He just always doesn't matter what's happening. He's um, he's got a good soul. He's he's a beauty, and uh, we'll see these guys go head to head last. Oh, sorry, next week in uh, the big finale. So can't wait for that. But uh, first things first, let's uh, get Queensland Oaks Day off to a winner, and don't forget about uh, Swan Hill Carnival too. That looks like an absolute beauty, and uh, DK's going John Allen early doors to get the cash. We'll see you next week, and can't wait for more action. Oh, oh, oh.